Newton's first law is this. When there's no resultant force, an object's motion is constant. In other words, no change in velocity. That could be because there's no forces acting or the forces are balanced. By the way, inertia is the term we use to describe the tendency for an object's motion to stay constant unless acted on by a resultant force. Newton's second law involves unbalanced forces. That is, there is a resultant force. This is equal to ma, mass times acceleration. That's all Newton's second law is. F equals ma. Only one of these can be true in any situation. There's either no resultant force or there is. We can prove Newton's second law by doing a practical. We use a trolley on a track being pulled by the weight of masses hanging over a pulley in the end. We can use light gates, photo gates, to measure the acceleration between two points, then change the weight on the string. Just remember that whatever mass you take off the hanger must go on the trolley itself, as the force is accelerating both the trolley and the masses themselves. We draw a graph of force against acceleration, and it should be a straight line through the origin, proving the proportional relationship between F and A. The gradient should give you the total mass of the trolley and slotted masses. Newton's third law, however, is always true, and this is the one that people get confused about, understandably. For every action of force, there is an equal and opposite reaction force. But this is not referring to balanced forces. It's all about perspective. When we think about the first two laws, we only really consider the object itself. For example, the force pulling downwards on the ball is its weight. Even if there is air resistance, there's a resultant force downwards. However, if you zoom out and think about the Earth too, well, we know that the Earth is pulling down the ball, but Newton's third law says the complete opposite is true as well. The ball is also pulling the Earth up. Now, the Earth is so massive that it doesn't really have an effect, but it's still true nevertheless. Another example, if you have two ice skaters, if the guy skater pushes on the girl skater, there's an equal and opposite reaction force pushing back on him too. That's why they both move away from where they were. Leave a thumbs up if you found this helpful. I've also made videos covering whole papers to help you in your revision. Click on the card to go to the playlist for your board or have a look on my channel for more. See you next time.